In this scenario, we're going to take a look at running the rogue DHCP server service and using the shell shock attack um, to do a little more damage, to be a little more malicious than just the basic test that we ran in the last scenario. So here we try to SSH into the client system, and we're seeing that it's requiring a password to use. So we'll just control C out of that, um, and we're going to take a look at the host file on this particular system. We can see that 192.168.1.10 was used as the web server, which we used in our previous uh, rogue DNS server, or poison DNS server um, example, to go to gmail.com, mail.google.com, etc. But we also have a DNS uh, service name of uh, web on that that particular client as well um, that is actually running that web server. So if we go into the var www.html directory of that web server, we can see we have a file called bad key. If we cat out the contents of that file, we can see it is an actual SSH public key that we're going to use in this attack. go ahead and look at the dnsmass.conf file. We can take a look at the option 100 that was previously set um, to echo that file to temp, but in this case we're starting to use it to do a little more malicious activity where we're actually running the curl command on the remote system and we're pointing it to that web server and that bad key file and then we're redirecting that file to output to the .ssh authorized keys file in the root home directory of the client system or the target system. So what we're effectively trying to do here is plant our public key on that system to allow access to that system via SSH without a password to the root user. And if we look on our system here, we can see our keys on the rogue DHCP server. And we have the public and private key that were generated using the um, SSH keygen command. And there's the public key that was planted on the web server as the bad key file. We're going to go over on the client now and run the DH client process to try to pull an IP address from the rogue DHCP server. In this case, if we look in the contents of the SSH folder, we can now see that there was an authorized key file that was written by the root user. And if we cat out the contents of that file, we can see the public key was pushed through the DHCP service using the shell shock vulnerability or exploit. And we'll just take a look at the dnsmass.com file and show how we push that key over to that client or actually how we downloaded the key to the client after the client received its DHCP address and network information. And then we'll just search for our history for that same SSH command that we ran at the beginning of the demo and just rerun it again now with the SSH key planted on the system. And we can see that it immediately logs us right in without a password. So now we have the root uh, user access to the target system. We'll just run that command again just to verify. And we can see that the last login was indeed from the rogue DHCP server.